Thanks for tuning in to this Mission Control how-to video on the project billing type Deposit to TNM. In Mission Control, there are five billing type methods available on a project. Fixed price, fixed price plus expenses, time and materials, control on milestones, and deposit to TNM. The deposit to time and material billing type enables you to manually raise deposit invoices. And once that amount has been used, time and material invoices will be generated periodically. This billing type is used with a periodic billing cycle. For more information on the periodic billing cycle, check out the training video on periodic billing. There are a few items required to set up in order to use deposit to TNM billing. The first can be found in the control pad in the billing event settings. The first setting is the PDF generation. This process runs every five minutes and will automatically create a PDF to send to your customer once the billing event has been created. The second setting is periodic billing. This setting is required in order to periodically create the billing events for the time logs and expenses that have been logged on the project. This process runs once a day at the time scheduled. You can also set up your PDF template settings like your invoice template label, your credit note label, business registration, your logo, and further information. You will also want to consider setting up a tax label. Let's take a look at the project setup. I have the billing type on my project set to deposit to TNM. I've also specified a billing rate and a cost rate. I have this currently set to pull the rate from the roll record. In the billing information, I've also specified a tax label. The tax label can be used to specify a sales tax, the currency in locale for the invoice, or it can be used to override the labels on the invoice in case your customer is using a different language. It can also be used to invoice the customer on behalf of another business entity. This will override the company information on your invoice. The billing cycle will need to be set to periodic so that after the deposit is made, the time and material billing events are created according to the periodic billing frequency. I currently have the periodic billing frequency set to monthly. There are a few options available. The billing frequency can be set to weekly, which will occur on the day that you set, so maybe every Friday. You can select fortnightly to bill every two weeks. First in the 16th, this will include approved time logs and expenses up until the 30th and the 15th. Four weekly will allow you to generate a billing event every four weeks. And then monthly will allow you to specify a day of the month that you would like to bill. So if that's every 17th of the month. And then quarterly will allow you to create a billing event every three months. In addition to setting the periodic billing frequency, you'll also want to uh, specify your payment terms, which will provide a due date for the customer to provide payment. And then you'll also need to specify your periodic billing next date. This will start the periodic process. And once the process runs on the 21st, the periodic billing last date will be updated to the date that the process runs and the periodic billing next date will be specified according to the periodic billing frequency. So it will now update to January 21st, 2022 once the process runs. These are all the settings that are required to use deposit to TNM billing type. Now let's take a look at how to create the deposit billing event. To do so, I select New on the Billing tab. You can also create a new billing event from the Billing Event object or from the related list on the project record. Populate the details for your billing event as required. After naming your billing event, you'll need to specify the type as an invoice and then set the status to Draft. There are three status values available, Draft, Issued, and Paid. Once the invoice goes out to the customer, the billing event will need to be updated to invoiced or issued. Once the full billing event has been paid off, then the status will update to paid. So right now we're going to set this to draft and define a summary for our invoice. 
And then this is really important when creating our deposit billing event. There is a deposit checkbox that needs to be marked true. This will relate our time logs and expenses to our billing event until the full amount of the billing event is accounted for. And this is only to be used with the deposit to TNM billing type. The account and contact information will be pulled over from our project record. So that will be all of the information needed on our billing event. Let's get this created. So we can see that my deposit doesn't have any amount populated yet. And that's because we need to go in and add our billing event item for the fixed amount. You can have as many deposits on your project as required before the periodic TNM. However, each deposit billing event can only have one billing event item for the fixed amount. So let's fill out the details. You can also mark here if the billing event is tax applicable and the tax amount will be populated automatically. You'll also want to define a description as this will be the line item uh, title in the invoice. If you have any values in the ledger code, you can also specify that as well. So let's go ahead and save our billing event item and take a look at how that affected our billing event. So going back into our billing event, we can see that the amount is now populated because I did not make it tax applicable. It's going to be the fixed amount of 3,500. So let's take a look at our invoice. We can see that the PDF generation process hasn't run yet from the control pad, so we'll need to generate a PDF manually. And to do so, we'll go to the quick actions on this record and select view PDF. If there aren't any changes or a PDF has not been generated yet, you'll also get a generate PDF button. So once we click this, we'll get our invoice. All right, taking a look at our invoice, we can see that our logo and invoice details have been updated from the settings in the control pad. We have our company information, our contact and account information is populated as well. And then we get a few details for our invoice, our summary, as well as the description for our, our fixed amount of 3,500 and then a breakdown of the amount paid and the balance due and so forth. Let's make a payment on this and see how it affects our details on our invoice. So going back to our billing event record, I'm going to go to the related tab to create a payment. You can also add a payment from the billing tab on your project overview. All right, so we're going to specify a name, payment method, the date paid, as well as the amount. And then if you need to uh, provide a reference number, you'll want to enter that in here as well. So let's select save. All right, so now that the full amount for the billing event has been accounted for, we can see the status has updated to paid. And then to update our invoice, we'll need to generate the PDF again or wait for the PDF generation process to run. And now we can see on our invoice that the amount paid has been updated to 3500 and the balance due is now $0. And all of these invoices that are generated will be saved to the files on this billing event record in the related list. Now let's take a look at our periodic time and materials billing event. Now because the process hasn't run yet for my, my periodic billing, according to the date specified on the project, I've created a second project that already has an existing uh, deposit and periodic TNM billing event. Let's take a look. So on this project, I have my deposit invoice that has been accounted for. Well, we could see the status is updated to page, so the full amount has been paid. And then we also have our time and material billing event. So when we click into this billing event, we can see amount has been populated and let's take a look at the line items. All right, so we have one line item for the time logs that were logged during this billing period. Um, if there were any expenses, there would also be a second line item for the expenses as well. Let's send this to our customer. To do so, if you have the email activity on your billing event page, then you can write an email directly from here where we've also included an email template to send to the customer. This email template is called Billing Event Notification Client. And when you select this and insert it into the email, your customer will have details of the invoice regarding the invoice number, date, due date, a summary, and the total for the invoice. They will also receive a view PDF link. So this link can also be found on our, on our billing event record. 
and it can be shared with the customer. They will not have to log in to Salesforce in order to access this document. So this will be externally available. The customer can also save and download or print the PDF from this link as well. So once we've sent this to our customer, then we'll go in and update our status to issued. Now that we've created both our deposit billing event and our time and material billing event has been generated from the periodic process, let's take a look at how these affect the time logs. So in this tab, I have the time logs related to inaction on my project. And you can see here in this list that they are associated to two billing events, our billing event for the deposit and then our billing event for the time logs. Just to show you how these are split, only the time logs that amount up to the 3,500 that we put on the deposit will be included in that billing event. Once the 3,500 has been fulfilled, the time log that is remaining will be split so that just the 3,500 is related to the deposit and then the remaining time logs will be related to the periodic time log invoices. If you have both expenses and time logs, the time logs will be the only item that is split. If including the expense will go over the deposit billing event amount, the expense record will then be picked up in the periodic time and material billing event. That will be all for the deposit to TNM billing type. Please feel free to check out the remaining videos in the billing series. Thanks for watching.